Get to know the babes behind the brand as they talk business, women supporting women, and share what it's really like to work in the fashion industry. Hey guys, it's Donnie here, founder of Privileged Clothing. Hi, it's Katie, um, head of stock management and miscellaneous tasks. <laughs> it's Leah, operations manager. It's nice to be here with you ladies. Katie, you haven't been on in a while. Yeah, it's been a while. It's always sure. lovely when Katie graces us with her presence on the podcast. You know something amazing is about to happen when Katie's here. The, the shit that comes out of her mouth, I tell you. It's going to be good. I feel like you guys are starting to like book me earlier, so it's like I'm not pulling out the wine or something. The no, last no, few just... I've been on, they're like 10 a.m., 11 a.m. What's up with that? We should just get it out. We just only have the bad wine here. We need to remedy that and stock up a little bit. Let's intro our guests because they're sitting here and they both look fantastic. If we can talk about their outfits in a minute. Um, okay. And their hair and their face. I know. We, we're obsessed already and it's 10 minutes into meeting them. So Landre was dreamt up on a beach in Mexico while the co-founders were working on a photo shoot. Combining their passion for the environment, love of all things ocean related, and their obsession with creating the most flattering cuts, this best friend duo was inspired to create a, mon- a multifunctional swim and bodywear collection. Welcome the founders of Landre, Ainsley and Hannah. Hi. Hi. Thank you so much for having us. So nice to have you both here. You're definitely speaking our language with the wine. Mm. <laughs> okay. Well, you guys. We maybe could we should, open it. We should do mimosas. It's, it's 11.13. Yeah. It's time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's 2.15 uh, Eastern Standard Time. Yeah. And we're already yeah, perfect. perfect. Yeah. It's yeah. great. <laughs> Uh, Well, we're so excited to have you here. Why don't we jump into our Q&A? Donnie, do you want to kick us off with your boss or bust? Okay, I'm fully taking a boss because I have survived the last five days of the flu. Not for me personally, but uh, it's hit two of the five members of my family in my house. And being the mom, that means I have sleepless nights. So I have been, Elliot was sick for like three or four nights straight. And then it went on to Emerson. I think it's been more than five nights. But I have not had uh, a full night's sleep, at least, in a week. It's like 2 a.m. wake-ups and vomiting and changing bedding and laundry, and that is not easy to live with. Your boss is surviving and being here. (laughs) Yeah, and life just doesn't pause for that. And you wake up in the morning, and, you know, your kids are home from school, and there's things to do. And so you try to pause it as much as possible, but there's still things to do. We're in the middle of this, like, massive change with the business right now and one of the stores is moving so you just got to keep going I love when Donnie calls me like four days ago and she's like what is worse than somebody puking in your bed at two in the morning and I'm like no (laughs) no we all know the answer (laughs) the answer is somebody shitting in your bed at two in the morning (laughs) and that didn't happen just once this week to me that happened twice and I'm not talking about myself everybody if you're thinking I'm referencing. I'm glad you clarified. I'm referencing a baby in diapers. Oh my god, it's been a freaking nightmare. It's a boss that you're here. Okay, Katie, what's your boss or boss? You don't want to talk about shit in the bed anymore, Leah. (laughs) You're changing the subject so fast. I was just getting started. Keep going if you'd like. Okay, 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 Katie, go on. Um, I'm gonna take a boss. I threw a rager at my house this weekend. I had 50 people over. It was Riley's. On a Sunday night. On a Sunday night. um, It was my daughter's team wind up for her cheer team. But her coach, who's one of my best friends, his boyfriend was proposing to him. So I threw not only a nice wind up party for everybody, hostess with the mostest, but also threw a surprise engagement party at the same time. That's not even my boss. I don't know if you guys know, though, how hard it is to find, like, a wedding card or an engagement card for a gay couple. Really? Oh, I went to many different places, and I have to give a shout-out to Indigo because they had about three or four to choose from. Okay, what did your card say? It was so. It was just said Mr. and Mr., and it had two bow ties on it. Oh, that's so cute. And then in the inside, it was like a congratulations. But, yeah, it was very hard. I went to numerous different places, and... Not everybody is accepting of it, I see. Which or I think is a problem. I mean, couldn't you just use a regular engagement card? Well, no, because it's always like Mr. and Miss or like a picture of a woman and a man or like it's always. Yeah, it's like 2019. You'd think that'd be more common. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I was talking to um, the couple about it and he's like, that's really nice to know that like Indigo is accepting of us. 
no. Yeah. Cute. Cute. But it was a good You're so event. so thoughtful, Katie. It was a good event. And you fed us all and took care of us. I manned the grill. Yeah. I had a couple dads come up and they're like, oh, do you want some help? And I'm like, no, no, I got this. Full I up. wasn't super grateful when the food that you had grilled up was on the floor of my bathroom in the form of vomit at 2 a.m. But nonetheless, <laughs> I still forgive you. Okay, well, I'm taking a boss. It's a really simple, short one. But I got ID'd buying a bottle of wine. Super yeah, happy. you did. <laughs> That's it. Do you guys remember like, okay, you weren't there, but we went out um, for Katie's birthday a couple of weeks ago yeah. and I didn't have any ID and I had to steal Carly's ID to get into the bar. You got ID'd. I got ID'd. Isn't that the greatest feeling? We were also trying to go to like a nightclub though. Like who doesn't bring ID to a nightclub well I wasn't like, planning to go to the nightclub ever club. since bar watch has been implemented you know you need two pieces of ID to get into a club so you're saying that I don't look 19 and that I got ID just out of protocol <laughs> that's what you're saying <laughs> am I right I fully got ID'd like at my regular liquor store just buying one bottle of wine so I feel like I that like was that. such a moment for me good for you Leah I'm so happy thanks you should still be happy about the club though Am I the only person that hates getting ID'd? Like, I don't take it as a compliment at all. Why? Like, are you fucking kidding me right now? You're going to make me dig it out like I look like I'm 12? I feel like it's yeah, an insult. Yeah, it feels like a joke. Yeah. You're like, are you punking me? Like, let's get serious. I've got like 14 kids behind me. I remember one time I was with Riley and I was like, I honestly don't have it on me. I'm like, this is my kid. She's like, honey, you don't have to be 19 to have sex. And I was like, so now you really think I'm a teen mom. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> I'm still flattered, even though that was like a weird turn. <laughs> okay, let's jump over to you, Ainsley. Boss or bust? Oh, I didn't. I wasn't expecting this question. Okay, well now <laughs> you're on the spot. It's you guys. No, oh, it's you. Okay, Share with okay, us. Well, do you have like a, a highlight? Boss. Oh, you do. Yeah, I've got a boss. I've got a boss for you guys. Okay. I made pasta from scratch this weekend. Stop what? It. Which is the most satisfying feeling in You're the speaking whole my language. world because yes. you wind it through this thing and it's like one of those Instagram like satisfying videos. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> Watching goodness. Watching the pasta get cut um, and it tasted very good in my opinion. Oh, I'm so excited about this. Okay, I've That's never my... made pasta, but like from scratch, I make pasta like every day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um is it one of those things where it's so much work and then it makes so little or does it actually like the volume yield volume is off the charts it makes so it's much it's like a family style yeah. meal okay. and you want to put the effort in and then save a little bit of it and yeah. then make it after tell me about the machine you use to make the pasta i bought it on amazon yeah. it was 39.99 and, and it, it was like spaghetti um linguine but you can make like lasagna sheets like any kind of pasta um yeah i, I want to buy one i have a ravioli cutter now you guys can oh, borrow man. it anytime. <laughs> was it really hard I to make learn. the dough? No, it's so, it's the easiest thing you'll ever do. And I'm not even just saying that to sound like, oh, it's so simple. Like, <laughs> I'm a garden. It actually is simple. You just make, like, put flour, and then you put an egg yolk in the middle, and then you mm -hmm. mush it around, and then knead it a bunch of times. Actually, I get my fiancé to knead it. Is that it? He just slams it around for a little okay, bit. That's literally it. I've wanted to try this to forever. <laughs> I feel like it's something I'd mess up, but there's yeah. such a difference between fresh pasta yeah. and... Mm -hmm like dried pasta for yeah. sure huge for sure and for entertaining too it's like a fun thing for the group to do together um because then you just throw it in the water and it's done in like a minute yeah yeah that's amazing I, I wanted to learn it. from you I've wanted to <laughs> I love cooking I have wanted to make pasta forever and hearing you tell me how easy it is I'm it do is it. the best the best okay I'm gonna do it I'm a little bit offended about you talking about this pasta and you didn't invite me you're oh, always yeah. invited for pasta. <laughs> I'm Anytime. coming knocking next time. <laughs> we're pretty much married, so she always can have my pasta. <laughs> I feel like at least leftovers yeah. at work, right? Yeah. <laughs> Bring something to the office. You guys think there would be leftovers? No. It's not. <laughs> That's like a fun thing to do. We should do that on the weekend, Katie. Yeah. The wine is key. I'm down of for course. it. Of course. Well, I mean, that's why I like to cook. Yeah, because mostly. it's like my <laughs> sanctuary of just like a quiet time that I can like drink wine everyone can leave me alone because I'm cooking for them mm -hmm. so nice. and, and cook but mm -hmm. I also feel like it's something that the kids could very easily get in on like when I ask Riley where do you want to go eat she says famoso because they give her a ball of dough when she sits down like that's that true. makes it for her sit down play with some dough that's true She'd love to make pasta it's a good it's a good activity mm -hmm. we should do it mm -hmm. all right Hannah boss or bust 
Um, I think I'm going to have to go with boss. I don't know on the, quite which level this is a boss, but um, I was stuck in an elevator yesterday. <gasps> Oh no. no! And I emerged, so I feel pretty <laughs> bossy about that. How long? Um, it wasn't that long. It was only about half an hour, but that's um, a long time to be stuck in an yeah. elevator. Yeah, I mean, I was on on my way to visit our manufacturer, and I was messaging her, telling her I was going to be late because I was stuck in an elevator, and um, she goes, "Oh my God, is there any air?" And I'm like, what? I didn't think about that before you said it, but now I don't know. <laughs> I'm like looking around for a vent. <laughs> Hannah calls me. She's like, it just slipped a little bit. She's like, the elevator just like went down. Oh my like, goodness. Quickly. At least your phone was working. Yes. Yeah. I was very, very grateful. That's for terrifying, that. actually. Yeah. And I was, I was by myself as well. So that was an extra level of fun. Um, but uh, yeah, they, they were pretty on it. Um, but now I won't be taking that elevator in my building. Anymore. Next time you take the elevator, you're going to bring some wine yeah, some that's so exactly. scary. just yeah. in case just in case you or I'm just know. gonna take the stairs and just work on my summer bond <laughs> <laughs> just really gets my, my legs it's so going, true you know? it's so true it's like maybe I don't need to circle the parking lot five times to yeah. find the front yeah. location I could yes. just walk yeah 10 parking yeah. stalls yeah. <laughs> that's amazing yeah it's a boss you survived Donnie what's your weekly obsession okay I got this new toothbrush <laughs> we saw the shipment come in we're aware <laughs> is it an electric toothbrush? It's electric. It's called, okay, I, I think it's called brush. It's like the, <laughs> we're not sure we'll fact check this. <laughs> no, but it's, okay, it's like the logo is like B-R-U with that, that German, what's the, oh. the two dots on top of it? So yeah. is that like a different pronunciation? It's, is it yeah, brush? Yeah, it would be brush. Brush. So anyways, I was brushing my teeth. <laughs> And uh, what a lovely experience, let me tell you. It is pink, first of all. Mm -hmm. And so I bought family toothbrushes so that there's no confusion because I'm sick of my kids fighting over toothbrush. And they're like, that's mine, that's mine, because they're both a different shade of blue and it's a big argument. So I got everybody their own color of brush. And uh, (laughs) it's just lovely. I really enjoy it. So mine's pink and Ev has a black one. What is different from like... A regular I have no idea. electric like does it have that high it's intensity got a bunch of, okay. vibration yes. where it's like Bring. yeah it's got that ultrasonic that is that what that's called yeah yeah but it's got like a bunch of different settings so there's one for whitening there's one for just like daily cleaning and then there's like I, do the kids get as intense as yours they're the same ones I literally brought four of the same and ones. what did Emerson say when they were put- my boys are <laughs> so excited about it and they both took them to their own bathrooms which is also good because I can't get them to use their own bathroom they keep just like bombarding mine um and they were just like had this like pride of ownership they're both like setting it up and setting the charger up so I hope they're more excited about brushing their teeth and that would be a a boss right there but I'm pretty stoked about that purchase this week so everybody I highly recommend you go buy yourself a brush (laughs) it honestly feels like you've stepped out of the dentist it's yeah. incredible. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's such a difference. It just feels shiny. Well, I had the Costco one. Like, it was the same. It was a good toothbrush with, like, that ultrasonic setting. But uh, mine stopped working, like, a couple months ago, so I've just mm. been using a regular toothbrush, and there's such a difference. I hate yeah. those. Mm-hmm. You can't go back once you've no. gone electric. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> no, you can't. <laughs> so moving on, Katie, what is your uh, weekly obsession? My weekly obsession is finding summer camps for my child (laughs) this week. I'm always the one who's ahead of the game, though. Am I not? For me, it's like July 1st. I'm like, where am I? What are my kids going to do tomorrow? Well, last year, what are those 10 weeks of summer vacation? I think she was in a camp for six of them and she loved it. She loves her life. I love my life. I get to work. Yeah. A little space apart, but I'll always like experience new things. I was searching basketball camps and stuff last night because you said Emerson wanted to go in basketball. Like I, they did musical theater last year for Riley. This year Riley will do basketball. She will. I'm trying to find camps for all of our kids to go to. I really appreciate that. Thank Mm -hmm. you so much. Well, we got to do it now. (laughs) What's your weekly obsession, Leah? Okay, I got a sample from Sephora a couple weeks ago, and I've been obsessed with it. It's the fresh rose face mask infused with real rose petals, so I feel fancy. But it's like a hydrating and toning mask, and I was... You sound like an infomercial right now. (laughs) I'm not even being paid for this. (laughs) Sephora, call me. (laughs) It's actually amazing. I was having a bit of a breakout, and I have what seems like oily skin, but it's actually just dehydrated. 
And my breakout after like using a hydrating mask, I did a peel, then use the hydrating mask for two days. And my skin felt amazing. It was so nice. It like cleared up my skin right away. It was really good. So I'm, I'm obsessed. I'm so happy for you. <laughs> I'm like resenting you for like, like the you alone time you have. Happy. <laughs> because I feel like I just want to wash my face at the end of the night and everyone just bothers me. Like just give me yeah. five minutes. Read me a story. Put me to bed. I'm like, jeez. <laughs> yeah, I'm so tired of wiping asses. Oh. Get a rose face mask. I need a vacation. Yeah. <laughs> Summer's coming. The camps are coming. The camps are coming. <laughs> okay, Ainsley, what's your weekly obsession? Um, I'm planning a trip right now um, to the Dolomites in Italy, which is a five to ten day hike. Um, that you do through like the Alps in Italy and I've heard of this I am so excited so I'm gonna do it in September um, and you hike basically from hut to hut so you end up staying in these refugios overnight and they make you like a three-course dinner with pasta is it fancy you might notice a bit of a theme here (laughs) you're getting ready for Italy planning my life around pasta (laughs) um and get wine and like cheese courses that are like from the area oh my goodness and it's like surprisingly inexpensive like I feel like this sounds like the bougiest thing ever it does sound bougie it sounds sounds amazing really oddly bougie we did a similar one in France last year um and it was like the least bougie part about it is you sleep in a room with a bunch of other people (laughs) who've just had a bunch of cheese (laughs) <laughs> how many people in one room oh my goodness like seven like at least seven like what if they're serial killers you know I also thought about that often late at night <laughs> when I was there <laughs> and um I would make my partner like sleep on the side of me that was oh, yeah. closer to Great you're like on the wall yeah put on me the in wall, a corner put me in a gas mask and <laughs> yeah rest me to sleep <laughs> survival of the fittest do you think yeah. we can get seven people to do this and then go do it Seven people we know. Yeah, it would be great if you knew everybody there, right? You can just coordinate yeah, the group totally. and then do it. Well, we've got six people right here. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds very fun. It's like very adventurous. Like, yeah. good for you. Yeah. Thank you. I think it'll be really fun. I'll let you guys know how it's it is. It's very cultural. I feel like it'll be enlightening no matter what. Definitely. <laughs> oh, that sounds amazing. All right, Hannah, your weekly obsession. Um, I'm going to have to go with the sunshine right now in Vancouver. It's just bringing everyone out. Everyone's oh, smiling. I've been running along the seawall. I live a couple blocks from the seawall, so I've been trying to like push myself further every day. Um, and I'll wake up the next morning. I'm like, why do my legs feel like I can't walk today? <laughs> I guess the office is going to be my house <laughs> this <laughs> afternoon. Um, but yeah, and also just you know, popping down to the beach and maybe having a little vino. I'm not mad about that. I mean, that. maybe. No, that's <laughs> maybe. I would think about. I would think about it. Everyone knows what's really in my skull yeah. bottle. <laughs> There's no <laughs> hiding it. it. No. You're like, oh, oh look, I have a too. not clear cup. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, you might notice a theme with me as well. Yeah. <laughs> when my husband and I discovered that a full bottle of wine fits in a corksicle, it was like the greatest day of our lives. <laughs> <laughs> we can go anywhere now, honey. <laughs> oh, and we do. Everyone knows our stories. We can go to the movies now. That's been holding me back. <laughs> Yeah, I, have a fl- I own a flask. What do you yeah. think those are for? Yeah. <laughs> okay, Katie has the coolest new flask. Okay, she'll show us. It, this can be your weekly obsession next time. If she really liked the birthday <laughs> gift I gave her, but obviously I like it more than she does. She's going to use it. Are you like not impressed that I haven't used it yet? I haven't been able to take part in it. So I feel like we should plan something that we can drink out of that flask at some point. Oh, I'm going to drink out of this weekend when When I take a limo down to the Urban Winery for Carly's birthday. Yes. Yeah. Good plan. What am I going to fill it with though is the question. That is Mm. a a question depending on the mood. I mean, today I would go with vodka martini. (laughs) But that could be dangerous. All right, Donnie, who's your boss babe crush? Okay, so this is, I was struggling with this question today yeah. and I was thinking about it all morning and I'm like, why is this so hard? And I know I answer these questions every week, so maybe that's why, but I feel like truthfully, I've made a real effort to stay like, just like really limit my social media time mm-hmm. because I feel, if I'm being totally honest, I think 2019 has been a really, um, I don't want to say a challenging year. I want to say a year where I'm really having to focus on myself and some self-growth and making some really important choices about my business. And you always hit those resistance points, right, at some point or another. So I think my boss babe crush 
what, like, I don't want to say it's myself, but I've been focusing on myself more than anything. So if I was going to have to choose someone, it would be from one of Oprah's guests on Super Soul Sundays, because that's basically what I've been listening to <laughs> nonstop. But I think I've been really focused on myself. And so I just... That's such a good answer. I don't, ha- I don't really have one this week. You do. You have yourself. <laughs> That's a good one. Mm. That's a really good one. Mm-hmm. But it, Go not even it. in a way where I'm like building myself up. It's more like I'm just like having an honest conversation with myself and working yeah. on the things I need to work on. That's so good. I love it. Katie, Boss Babe Crush. Um, I'm going to give a shout out to Priv Babe Tasha. Um, I'm like actually obsessed with her styling videos that we've been posting I on know. all of our channels and our YouTube channel now. Um she just it seems so effortless when she puts them together and I know I've seen it from the beginning and like it was hard for her to get into it but like I just think she does such a phenomenal job and she's so cute she's so cute yeah. like she, at the beginning of everyone she does this cute little wave the fact that she can like put a skirt on and take her jeans off effortlessly in front of a camera while it rolls I'm like I don't know but like if you're like a hippier, thicker girl, my jeans do not come off that easy. <laughs> That's such a good point. Like, I am like shimmying out, hoping I don't bust the zipper open and wreck it. Yeah, like, there's like five lunges. Right? <laughs> it's Be, like, not that easy. A couple high leg kicks. A hundred percent. Well, and I will say that's awesome because my husband edits the videos. So he's always like, wow, Tasha's a pro. She's good at it. Yeah, okay. she never shows How did anything. mine turn out? Because I've... Great, we'll show it to you today. I've had to follow her, and that's it's so nerve-wracking because soon. hers are so cute. And I'm like, I can't be that cute in it. So <laughs> go back to your boss day crush and crush on yourself because it turned out great. Okay. We'll show you okay. after. Okay. <laughs> okay, everybody get ready to pull your Instagram and follow this woman. Has anyone heard of Dr. Patty Habe? Definitely haven't. Okay. She is on Instagram and she's obviously a doctor also, but she is about all about like women's fully integrated health and finding that naturally and like hormonal balancing, all that stuff. Stuff that I've been into for years as um, just so many struggles, but she talks a lot about like fertility and preparing for that and preparing your body. So she's right up my alley. Dr. Patty... What is it? H A E B E. H A E P A T T I. And then last name is H A E B E. And one thing that she had recently, Katie just like pointed at my screen, which is what I was going to share, is like a lot of women don't know this. I know this because I've been on a fertility journey for like six years, but it says Advil could be affecting your fertility. What? Oh, oh my God. Not even kidding. There's a stat that 70, that if you take Advil regularly, <laughs> you will miss 75% of your cycles. You will not ovulate 75% of the time. Stop. No. Seriously. How is that so mainstream then? What is Advil? Like, what is that doing to your body? It's taking away inflammation. Your whole cycle is inflammation. Oh, my God. Oh my Anytime gosh. you ovulate, it's inflammation. Your body needs to be inflamed to make that happen. So we're all, like, wanting to have, like, flat stomachs and this and that. But, like, you can't have that if you want to be fertile. You should be – you should actually be not bloated, but, like, you should have swelling. Yeah. I'd like to add to that our society has like created this myth where life is pain free. And totally. we should, if you have pain, let's eliminate it. Yeah. But but pain is for a reason. Sometimes it's yeah. bringing attention to something that yeah. needs to be fixed or let's like look at- those little monthly cramps. It's not just like, oh, two weeks after your period, you're crampy and bloating. You should take an Advil. You're ovulating. And <laughs> exactly. You're, congratulations, you're a woman. Well, also with kids, I would give Tylenol or Advil when they have a fever. But the fever is fighting the infection. Yeah. So you don't want to get rid of the fever completely because yeah. it's actually doing a job. Yeah. So it's more like balancing it. Yes, mm-hmm. if you can't handle it anymore or it's getting too high, you do sure. need, yes, mm-hmm. normal medicines. Yeah, but like generally speaking, I totally agree with where you're coming from. Like keep a mild fever. Like let yeah. the fever play its course. Let it yeah. do, we are, we, we have the ability to self-heal. Mm-hmm. We have to like honor our bodies. Totally. She talks a lot about that. So I think as a woman, she's such a, she's an impactful account to follow because she posts a lot and shares a lot and she does like Skype. Um appointments consultations whatever I also think hormone the hormonal conversation is something we talk a lot about in our 30s it starts Mm -hmm. the conversation starts we yeah maybe the first time we feel a hormonal imbalance but it starts like you should be in touch with your your hormones Mm -hmm. it starts in your teenage Mm -hmm. years and earlier and earlier nowadays and it continues 
postmenopausal. Yeah. So it's something that we should be in tune with our entire lives. She talks a lot about that too. I think you'd love following her account. Not I'm that you're on to. there much, but I think you'd love following her account. So she, I discovered her through a friend of mine this week and I've been like stalking her. That's a good one. So Dr. Patty, mm-hmm. let's, let's plan a podcast. But I, feel, I had this conversation with someone that's kind of similar. <laughs> Sorry, I'm ranting. Um, about allergy medications. It's a season. Yeah. Like allergies are everywhere. So everyone's like popping pills like crazy. Well, what if we're just like have itchy eyes for a season? Like, what, is it the worst thing ever? Like, is it worth taking medication for, sure. for it? Is it worth yeah. dehydrating yourself? It is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kate, Caitlin's saying yes. Kate's, yes. Kate's like, <laughs> well, Kate, we were just talking about this this morning because Kate was literally having that same conversation. She's like, is the dehydration and the dryness worse than the symptoms? Like, you're picking one worse thing you're over the other. Ice. You're just picking the one that's more bearable for you in the moment. Well, and I think as soon as you start intervening, your body stops doing it on its own. Mm-hmm. Totally. And this is where our conversation with, um, oh my gosh, I'm totally slipping her name in LA about CBD. What was her name? Annie. Amy. Amy. Oh, thank you. I'm like, it's right there. (laughs) Amy had some really valid points around that and the purpose of her CBD products. Of CBD. Yeah, Yeah. no, I completely agree. Like, let's use something natural at least Mm. to try. Find some comfort. Oh man, we could go down a rabbit hole here. Okay, Ainsley. We just did. <laughs> so it's like a whole other episode. I know. I it's know. Amazing. Like, it's I got such an a, interesting conversation. It's so yeah. interesting. Yeah. yeah, I really got into that. Okay. Um, my um, boss babe crush of yeah. the week is um, the Bird's Papaya. Is her Instagram? Oh handle. yeah. She's They're been a boss babe life. crush a lot on the podcast mm, lately. I have such strong feelings towards mm-hmm. her. Um, she's actually been wearing our suit a ton. She's been so supportive of our, of our business. Amazing. And I find her story so powerful i love looking at her captions she's so um vulnerable and really comfortable with herself which i find really inspiring i feel like it's a lesson that a lot of us could use coming up to summer um i love i love seeing it and i show everybody in like a creepy way yeah, that's, yeah. Have you seen you this should. Instagram yeah. post? You should. Have you seen this? I'm like, it's just dying to slip it into a conversation. So I'm so happy you guys asked. <laughs> <laughs> well, since you asked. Yeah. You didn't even have to slip that into the conversation. No, it's so amazing. Yeah. She's wonderful. <laughs> She's oh, amazing. yeah. yeah. She, posts, she makes some great photos, too. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I mean, you read my mind as per usual, but um, mm, yeah. I will give a shout out to someone else. Equally is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> um, Leah Alexander is someone she um, is. that we both love um, and that we look up to. And she's just so incredible. She's also been like a big inspiration for us in our mm-hmm. business um, and just so incredibly supportive like yeah. throughout our journey. Um, she does jewelry, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, I was, wanted to make sure I'm thinking yeah. the right And person. she's been on the podcast. She's so kind. She's, she's so, so lovely. Really so so lovely. Kind, so. so down to earth. Mm-hmm. Um, and just, yeah, yeah, we just love what she's up to. Um, and she also takes a lot of photos in our suits and we love yeah. that too. <laughs> That's Amazing. always good. I love I it. Mean, we're planning some stuff with her. Yeah. Too. So we're very excited about that. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> okay, Donnie, I want to wrap this up so we can get talking okay. about the girls. What's Things one I'm thing working, you're working on? I'm going to be really simple and quick with this one. I'm a bad texter and I have to admit mm-hmm. I, I am terrible at texting people back. I'm, I don't do it in a timely manner and I really struggle to find a way to not be on my phone all the time but also like not be rude and I think I definitely care more on the rude side as being a texter so I'm gonna it's something I'm just gonna work on good for you all right Katie um I'm gonna work on giving back to the community more this past weekend uh we went as a family to my brother works for a treatment center um he's four years sober and the huge message I took back from it was a 35 year gala that how they give back to their community and it comes back full circle. And I feel like sometimes I just get so caught up in like my life and my responsibilities and my, even just like my, like I give back to my family, but like, what am I doing for my community outside of my family? Some selfless. It's a good conversation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to concentrate on that moving into the summer some more. I think that's so important. I think that's the root of happiness too. Mm. Yeah. Leah? What are you working on? (laughs) I'll take the mic back. I actually just changed it because as I was thinking through it, so what I was going to say is celebrating failure, but actually kind of how I want to phrase that is being curious. Mm -hmm. So instead of looking at a failure and being like, oh, that was an epic fail, I would love to like reframe my mind and be curious. Like, okay, failure, done. Let's look at that failure and be curious about what worked in it because there's obviously something that might have worked but what didn't work. So instead of thinking of things as so black and white, like that was a failure, that was a success, being a little more curious about what's working and what's not. And just like staying really 
asking questions and staying yeah staying kind of lends to that beginner's mm. mindset right like let's mm. take something yep. from it and let's like tweak it maybe there's a great idea that could come from it yeah mm. and I think that's where curiosity kicks in is like I think that it's easy to look at something and be like oh well that that didn't work but like let's be curious let's dig into it a little more ask some questions like what did work what didn't work yeah because everything is a learning opportunity totally and everything if you believe everything happens for a reason which I do then failure happens for a reason yeah Mm -hmm. yeah so if you can't find the takeaway well then it is really for nothing yeah yeah so like being curious instead of like life is about the journey so let's be curious about it and learn we like to say every day is a school day. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> every day is a school day. Yeah, it really so is. So true. Yeah. <laughs> it's really good. All right, Ainsley, one thing you're working on improving. Um, I'm working on improving my meditation practice. I feel like that's learning to meditate and having that be a part of my life has been such a journey for me. And I find sometimes on the weekends I fall off the map from mm-hmm. doing that. Because I'm a out of little routine, a little bit hungover, a little bit out of routine, <laughs> and just like not in my flow. Um, and I find when I'm meditating more, I feel more connected to the idea that perception is everything, and that I feel like I have a lot more control over the way that I perceive different situations. So, getting into my meditation practice is big for me right now. That's so good, mm-hmm. Hannah. What are you working on improving? Yeah, um, I think for myself, and also just for us. Um, recently just working into if it's not a hell yes it's a hell no Mm. Um, and that creates space for um, you know when you say no you know five other doors will open that really resonate with you and what you want to be doing and what um, you know working more so towards the goals that you're trying to achieve Um, yeah I love so good. that. If we it's were not a hell yes, it's a hell no. We were kind of talking about that this morning about just like being being open to say no and then mm. not being afraid of the no because it feels limiting, but at the same time you're saying no to something so something else can happen. Mm. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's it's so good. It's easy to be like kind of that people pleaser and want to make everyone happy, but really you're kind of losing yourself in that. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, definitely something I'm And giving on. giving a polite no makes mm-hmm. everybody's lives better. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A polite no. Yeah. <laughs> so key. Thanks, but no. So key. Being <laughs> thanks, aware of, no, being sensitive and aware of people mm-hmm. and being kind still, but you can still say no For kindly. For sure, because then you're not going to bail last mm-hmm. minute. Definitely. Yeah. Which is the worst. <laughs> <laughs> Saying yes, knowing you're yeah. going to say no. Yeah. <laughs> the art of no. Mm, it's yes. so mm-hmm. hard for me. That's so definitely one of my biggest challenges. Yeah. Are you really going to do your best, though, if you're committing to something that you don't really want to do? Not at all. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. You're not. You know, like, mm-hmm. if it doesn't, yeah. sh- like, strike a fire inside of you, don't do it. Mm-hmm. Do something else. 100%. Okay, ladies. Tell us a little bit more about your company and the conception of it. And we gave a brief intro, but you can go deeper here. Cool. So, um, so I'm I'm Ainsley. I'm Hannah. <laughs> <laughs> we sound really similar. We spend a lot of time together, and so we've just sort of like become one. One person. And we will answer things at the same time in the same tone, which is a little bit. Wow. Cool. Quickly yeah. interject and ask you <laughs> how your eyelashes are so amazing. Um, I go to Lash Doll Studio in Yaletown. <laughs> Those are lash extensions? Yes. I'm dying right now. They're so... <laughs> Like, like she looks like she's the most gorgeous long well, natural lashes you. this is actually after three and a half weeks i really tried to just pull through on this one but yeah it's about time that i would I have not known my girl. <laughs> cool. yeah christine's amazing yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, i'll be there in 10 minutes yeah. <laughs> booking now yeah. <laughs> um yeah we came up with our business laundry where we make swimsuits out of recycled plastic Um, when Hannah came down to do a photo shoot that I was working on in Mexico um, and we were having a few margaritas on the beach and we started talking about (laughs) quite quite a few (laughs) and um, we started talking about what our life goals are um, which is a great conversation to have when you've had a few margaritas Um, and we decided that we wanted to start a business together and we knew we wanted to do something in sustainability um, and something that would help improve the lives of women and this is kind of what we what we nailed down. Ains and I also have had the travel bug, I think, like since 
from birth. So mm -hmm. um, we wanted to create a piece that was super versatile um, and also allowed us to have that flexibility with travel. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something for us that's that we've sort of honed in on from the beginning is to be able to work remotely so that we can do these incredible trips to the Dolomites mm -hmm. and yeah. wherever else. Hannah and I also love to eat salty foods like tacos. And yeah. so Ooh. we wanted to create a product that you could Ooh. wear and eat all the tacos and still feel really comfortable. <laughs> and <laughs> Really, that's the main reason. That's mostly our business, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm not even joking. Every time, everything I try on, I'm like, does this pass the burrito test? Like, that's a Yay. phrase that I use. Kate's <laughs> yeah. nodding. Like, I love that. I the relate way, to that. The way that you just vocalized that was magic, though. Yeah. She's like, we just want, we really just truly, at the heart of our business, want to create something that someone can feel good and eat tacos in. Yeah. And that's the heart that of speaks to my like, soul. Put that on a billboard. <laughs> yeah. Speaks to my soul. <laughs> and also at the forefront is so much about environmentally friendly practices in your production. Mm -hmm. Share with us a little bit yeah, more. Yeah, I want to know that. like how you found the fabric. How mm -hmm. did you how did you yeah. go about that pro part of the process? So something that we learned um, early on in this process was that um, generally swimsuits are made from oil, so they come from non-regenerative fossil fuels. Um, they're essentially made out of plastic. So there's no real reason why you can't use recycled plastic um, in the manufacturing process. So we made a bunch of cold calls and emailed so many people and went to so many weird warehouses together. <laughs> um, and we just asked so many questions to find products that we liked. And the thing about sustainable materials is that they're not all created equal. Um, mm -hmm. There's absolutely some sustainable materials that are not very good quality, which is unfortunate because from a sustainability perspective, you want to be buying quality. Um, because then it's if not going to fall apart. If you're buying sustainable that's falling apart, what's the what's difference? What's the point? Yeah. And you don't want to feel like you're actually wearing plastic bottles. That's no. true. Well, yeah. <laughs> it has to true. still pass all of the other tests. Exactly. Yeah. Fashionability. <laughs> mm -hmm. like, like there's there's a whole checklist that it would take me. So oh, yeah. cost yeah. and feel. Yeah. Uh, feel, fit, um, mm -hmm. functionality. Is it, is it functional? Is it fashionable? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does it make my ass look good? Totally. <laughs> yeah. That's cute You're speaking us. our language. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Big time. <laughs> Very deep questions. Yeah. <laughs> okay, and there's another, um, I keep calling it an ingredient. I'm such a, I, I'm in the cook. There's another, <laughs> after know. the pasta, part, just, I know. you're stuck on the pasta. <laughs> but we came up with this phrase before the podcast. Let's talk about the dry shampoo of your suits. Yes. <laughs> yes. The Cheeto. The Cheeto Sante. Cheeto Sante. Tell us about that, how you came across this, and then its function and use in your suits. Um, yeah, so Cheeto Sante is actually a byproduct of the shellfish industry, um, and it's basically woven into our suits, and it makes it antibacterial and anti-stink. So we like to say you can wear it to Coachella every day, and you're still good to go on the fifth day. <laughs> it's five days in. <laughs> it, your suit actually will smell much better yeah. because of it. It makes a huge difference. Yeah. So if you know how your suits kind of get a little bit damp sometimes, like it oh, yeah. is the mm -hmm. especially in in salt water. Totally. Yeah. Totally for sure. So that's that's why we we made that. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, it comes from crushed seashells. Interesting. That's mm -hmm. so amazing. Mm -hmm. It makes mm -hmm. you feel like a mermaid saying that. Yeah. <laughs> it does. Yeah. yeah. You I'm basically are. Bottles. Yeah. <laughs> So that's built right into your fabric. Yeah, yes. that's right. That's amazing. It's not like a finish. It's like in the fibers. It's like built into the fabric. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. incredible. What cool technology they have now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How yeah. did you guys find that? Are you working, is it through your factory or were you doing a lot of your own research in this development process? So we did quite a bit of our own research um, mm -hmm. and then we found an Okio Tech certified factory, which basically is like the highest measure, measure of sustainable manufacturing in the world. Um, so we found this amazing um, textile factory that produces our stuff um, mm -hmm. and they use like the least amount of water possible. Um, so all of the water used in our process is able to be reused. Um, it comes out as gray, as gray water. So basically you can use it for any industrial purpose mm -hmm. um, and they use the least amount of power possible. Everybody's paid a living wage. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's I amazing. Love that. mm -hmm. That's so good. I have a question. Yeah. How does that translate like in the business perspective? Because those are lofty goals. Like mm -hmm. all of those, hitting all those boxes, I, I can't imagine, like it would be an expensive product. How does that translate into retail? That's actually such a good question. Mm -hmm. um, I think that there is, using anything that's innovative, 
there's often like an added cost, sorry, innovative, not innovative. Yeah. Yeah. Um, using anything that's innovative, there's an added cost to that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, with that being said, I feel like because there is a shift towards more conscious consumerism that we've been really lucky to have like this amazing community back us and be so excited about what we're producing um, that I think that's kind of offset the added cost of using a more sustainable material. Mm -hmm. Um, But I will say with where sustainable textiles are at right now, they aren't as, um, as expensive as other things. I don't know. Actually, mm-hmm. we don't even really look at other things, so it's, it's never mind. <laughs> yeah. I was just thinking, I'm like, actually, I don't really know if that's true. <laughs> You're in your own lane. Yeah. <laughs> From a business perspective, though, the reason I ask that question is you're competing with companies like Forever 21 who are making $5 mm-hmm. bathing suits. Mm-hmm. So does the customer realize it and find the same value in it that I do? I definitely mm-hmm. see value yeah. in that. Mm-hmm. Um, or are they still judging you based on fit? And like, is, is, is that really the box? Yeah. I mean, I think that we've been really, um, grateful and having such an incredible community support us. Mm -hmm. Um, and also like buying into a, something that's going to last, um, and that's going to be versatile. So instead of having to purchase one, sorry, purchase two things, you're just purchasing one item that you can use multiple different ways. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think, yeah. Yeah. I, I would I would totally agree with that. Um, and for us, there was no way we were gonna have a granola like sustainable company. <laughs> we do not like that aesthetic at all. We mm-hmm. love like clean, modern, classic um, silhouettes. And so for us, fit was number one. Fit mm-hmm. is number one. Fit yeah. is so important, and we just don't compromise on sustainability. Mm-hmm. I love that because I think that's that's the glue right there is you mm-hmm. guys because everybody else maybe would make the sacrifice if it was just Mm -hmm. based on fit Mm -hmm. and they could save a little bit but you guys aren't even offering them that you're like this is what it is if Mm -hmm. you want it and so those choices that you're making are actually so transformative yeah our our goal from the start was to compete with and exceed traditional retailers in terms of quality and design um, but still not sacrificing sustainability Mm -hmm. so there's like absolutely no way that we would ever want to create something that was like less flattering than what we do now and i i do think that we spent nine months developing our first SKU in design um to make it the most flattering option that we felt was available um so that's it's so important to do that as well Mm -hmm. i love that and that's Mm -hmm. still our best-selling piece which is pretty cool and we've sort of sort of built all of our other designs off of that first piece um so what piece is that yeah what's that one our uh, minimalist the minimalist yes Mm -hmm. i need that yeah. <laughs> we're all like making yeah. notes what we need to shop for <laughs> Hannah's actually wearing our newest suit right now yeah. I was this wondering this is the high line it's so pretty so it has a high neck and a very low back and um, it fits well under these pants that I'm yeah. also wearing I am obsessed <laughs> so with cute. that bathing suit I was going on your guys' website last night and that bathing suit is like so versatile you can literally like you guys say you can wear it out to a nightclub you could wear it to the mm-hmm. beach you could pair it with shorts yeah um we actually have clients who've literally worn theirs to like a black tie gala with like silk trousers, a blazer, a big Chanel necklace, yeah. um, and it's a swimsuit. That's <laughs> okay. <laughs> what about people with long torsos? Um, we, um, I'm actually pretty tall. I'm like five eight or five nine, um, and we have a two piece which has like the highest of high waisted bottoms. Mm-hmm. Um, we found a lot of swimsuits that had high waisted bottoms actually weren't hitting your smallest part. They were hitting your belly button, whereas ours go at an inch above your belly button, um, which looks amazing so on much somebody better. who's mm-hmm. tall. It looks awesome on somebody who's short. And then we have some other things that are adjustable. Mm-hmm. So like um, our multi waist suit, which you can tie six different ways, and our new um, highline. Could and the high line well as well. is adjustable yeah. as well. Mm-hmm. So those are amazing that. for <laughs> women with longer torsos. Okay, we also touched briefly on your marketing a little bit where you're educating your consumers about your manufacturing processes. But something that's also so noteworthy when you first discover your product on Instagram or your website is that you have such a strong focus on body positive imaging, which has been a little bit of a trend and a shift in some marketplaces, but for swimwear, I think that's such a strong statement and it's real relatable women. We were talking about the model who has stretch marks Mm -hmm. and there's Mm -hmm. a beautiful picture of her on your website. Um, Share with us maybe some of the intentionality behind that because that was that was something that you from the get-go wanted right yeah absolutely um I think 
from um, an ethical perspective, we're women, and I mean, I, we both had our fair share of body insecurities. Um, and even from a business perspective, we're an e-commerce company. It's not to your advantage if you don't have a wide variety of bodies wearing your suit because if you're not going to try something on, how are you going to know what it'll look like Absolutely. on you unless you can see a woman who looks like you? Um, so that's been a really important part of our business. And we also just, we were tired of seeing really obviously airbrushed images and we would never want to make somebody feel bad in order to sell a product. We always wanted to be celebrating women. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We've had some really incredible emails from women saying that it's the most, um, they've never felt so good in a swimsuit before. And when they looked at themselves in the mirror, they started crying. And mm -hmm. for us, that is just like such a positive mm -hmm. um, drive driving force forward and especially for me um, when I was younger I had an eating disorder and so being able to kind of like come full circle and be part of this industry that has previously made women feel negatively about themselves um, is just like so incredible and receiving those emails is just mm -hmm. like really touching yeah and even um, our tags say body mm -hmm. type so effing beautiful yes. but it you doesn't swear oh, it oh, yeah. okay uh, it says, okay try again yeah it yeah. says our takes say body type so fucking beautiful um and all of our size takes that from extra yeah. large to extra small um and we've found that that's made people feel really good and it mm -hmm. makes us feel good too mm -hmm. seeing that message yeah there's such a disconnect in like the people that are making and sizing clothes and then the people that are actually wearing them mm -hmm. so i love that you've made it a little more integrated where it's a little it, there's an affirmation and there's a mm -hmm. purpose and an, and an intentionality behind it mm -hmm. where you aren't looking at the size so much you're just like who cares just oh, buy okay. something that had it. because <laughs> swimsuits can be such a negative experience mm -hmm. uh it's kind of right up there with jean shopping mm. uh, yeah, or yeah. like underwear like yeah. if you're looking for like a new bra like it's just not always the best experience and yeah. you just don't feel good about yourself mm -hmm. yeah and those those details that maybe someone else might not notice as much but mm -hmm. I think that the fact that you that's what's on your tag is just mm -hmm. that extra little bit of like okay I just bought a swimsuit who cares what size it is my who cares what my body type is it I'm and beautiful feel, and I feel good in it mm -hmm. for yeah. sure yeah and I think the community of women that um, have started to interact with our product and have been reaching out to us has just shown that this is a really important conversation that people mm -hmm. do care a lot about even like we got an email from this girl who her daughter was autistic and it was the only swimsuit that our daughter had ever felt comfortable in um so getting those messages when we started doing this I don't think that I realized how much mm. having a swimsuit company would impact people mm -hmm. um and seeing even these like really small impacts we've made have yeah. been like so fulfilling like how personal it is it's so it's personal. really personal to be purchasing a swimsuit and we didn't yeah. realize that from the get-go but it's really become like a huge part of our story and like mm -hmm. our purpose so and a really so good neat. conversation that you're facilitating even mm -hmm. publicly because you're not you're not hiding any of these things they're all at the forefront of your branding yeah mm -hmm. and what you're doing and mm -hmm. I really like that that conversation is happening I've never liked shopping for swimsuits either and I'm thin so you think I would but I it's never fun ever I feel like everybody has mm -hmm. body insecurities even totally. if you're skinny if you're not skinny everybody has yeah. something that they're kind I of still about. have stretch marks on my butt I'm not excluded from that totally. like that's your marketing is so relatable because of that mm -hmm. and well, the, the positivity behind it it's also making the statement and differentiating your marketing because the reason that you don't feel good trying a bathing suit on really at the heart of it doesn't have much to do with your body it's the mm -hmm. messages that have been sent to us that it's so ingrained 100%. in our soul mm -hmm. and who we think we are and what mm -hmm. we're comparing ourselves to Mm -hmm. like yeah. our bodies move and they self-heal and they do all these amazing things but we're like but I'm pale but I'm this because <laughs> I have the measure of our beauty and that's mm -hmm. what we see everywhere that we go yeah or like I have small boobs I have stretch marks mm -hmm. I have big boobs I have whatever mm -hmm. there's it's so easy to get wrapped up in that conversation mm -hmm. actually this is just coming to me now I think what you've done is shifted the conversation from the type of body you have to just like what are you going to be the most comfortable in? Mm -hmm. Instead Definitely, of it being sure. like, oh, are you this size? Or are you that size? Are you curvy or plus size? Mm. Screw that. Yeah. 
what are you going to feel good in? Totally. Like live your life. I think when Ainsley and I, well, actually when Ainsley and I ever decide to choose an outfit to wear when we go out, we're just like, what are you going to have the most fun in? What can I, what can I lunge <laughs> what in? What outfit so are you going to have the most fun in? Wear that. This is where my burrito test comes <laughs> exactly. in. Yeah, I'm not even sure. kidding you. Uh, yeah. Can I eat a burrito at the end of the night in that? Can I go to McDonald's? Yeah. <laughs> And eat a crappy burger. Yeah. Well, Katie <laughs> and I good. were out on the weekend, and you were not feeling comfortable in your body, in your um, outfit from the get go. You no, were struggling. It wasn't my with outfit, it. it was my hair. Okay, well, whatever. My Dolly Parton <laughs> hair. You were complaining <laughs> a little bit. Your outfit actually looked really good. Yeah, it was a little tight, but I felt good in it. I was comfortable. I struggled finding something, but then when I tried on that pantsuit, I was like, yes, I can go out and be comfortable in this. But it's like we've all had that feeling where you're just like not feeling comfortable mm. in your own skin. It might be your hair, you make it might be everything. At that point, whatever you wear is just like, oh, it's not mm-hmm. gonna matter. Like just burn it. There's, yeah. there's <laughs> no point. Uh-huh. Um, but you have to feel good. It's all internal. Mm-hmm. It is. And even just the perspective, like Hannah, you were saying about um, it struggles with eating disorders. That's not that's not just like one person that has felt that that's Mm. so prevalent and not talked about enough. So Mm. I think that even the steps that you're taking are really affirming in a positive direction to help people through that too. Definitely. Yeah. I think that's so positive. Okay. What has been the biggest hurdle in your business so far? What have you done to overcome that? When we first (laughs) were going to launch, um, when we first started working on our business pre launch, um, Hannah and I had this vision of moving to Bali and so we thought we would do our <laughs> manufacturing there. It was a disaster. I got left at the airport with, um, they'd st- taken all my fabric. Um, they didn't do their samples. It was like 1 a.m. and they'd been pushing the date back. Um, and so I just was sitting there at like 1 a.m. just like so sunburned and so over it. And I left and then Hannah went back um, two weeks later mm-hmm. and had a similarly negative experience yeah yeah it was, I mean it's island time right so it's yeah. like pulling teeth to get an email but yeah it was I <laughs> really <will> tricky <laughs> Donnie and I have in the past seven days for sure shed tears over manufacturing oh, it is the most so stressful thing oh my goodness yeah. yeah I think we're so grateful to have each other because even mm-hmm. in those tough times it's kind of like okay let's you know I'll pick you back up and put you on my back and like let's yeah. go <laughs> um for the sure. balance yeah definitely and I yeah. think like recently probably something we've been really trying to overcome is um just our growth we've mm-hmm. had such an incredible amount of growth even just from the beginning of this year um so just kind of like getting too big for our bridges a little bit um mm-hmm. so just kind of like moving into that growth period and figuring out all the logistics of that it's, Definitely. it's funny because growing is so exciting we're so happy to be um having this experience but it's also been um kind of stressful in its own way I feel like probably a lot of entrepreneurs will relate to this like things are going so well people are like oh my god this is going so good for you guys it's really exciting you're getting all this good press um but that success also can make you feel like oh my god oh my god like it's like amazing but holy shit at the same time (laughs) and like we right now like our stuff is at Shay Hannah so it's been like yeah one day we've got HQ 160 orders (laughs) like by hand so doing that kind of stuff has been like amazing but also a lot (laughs) so all the challenges yeah Yeah. every day is a school Mm -hmm. day Every, sure. Oh, I love that so much. <laughs> but why else are you doing it if you're not learning something? Oh, exactly. Totally. 100%. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the mm-hmm. process is fun too. Stressful, mm-hmm. but fun. So fun. Yeah. 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 Having each other has been the biggest blessing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We have a listener question. They want to know what was the best advice you were given when you started your business? So we've been really privileged to know um, and to come to know a big community of other entrepreneurs. Um, so uh, this is kind of a random one, but... Sarah Panton um, from Vitruvi um, is kind of in my social network. So I reached out to her pre-launch and was like, this is what we're doing. Um, What do you think from an e-com perspective? Um, And she basically said that we were doing, we were making a big mistake because we'd had (laughs) built our website on this like specific platform. And she was like, you guys need to delete everything that you've done and you need to do it onto this other platform called Shopify. And um, we're so grateful to her for this, like to this day, because like learning how to pivot when something is Mm. maybe not going to serve you in the long term has been such a big lesson for us. So I'm I'm really grateful for that. Definitely. Never looked back. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I would say also um, taking risks. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I think we've learned, especially recently as well, that um, having a voice, a strong voice as a company um, mm-hmm. and taking those risks can really pays off and really builds your community as well yeah. and builds that loyalty for your community. Totally. Yeah. I also yeah. feel like as a business, um, we're in a really privileged position to have a voice um, mm-hmm. and we definitely want to use our voice for good um, and be really strong in our choices. Mm-hmm. You are through your branding. I think you guys are doing really well with that. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> okay, something we ask all of our guests before we wrap up is to share a piece of advice or a mantra you're living your life by. So you can each share. You don't have to wrap this into one. In my personal life, I'm going to go with progress, not perfection. Um, I feel like I have a tendency to be a bit of a perfectionist. Um, and while I, I can see in some way how that serves our business, I think in my personal life, um, just grounding myself in a sense of progress um, makes me feel a lot lighter. Awesome. Amazing. Um, I would say, especially recently, um, I saw this and it really kind of hit home with me and that was um, like really leaning into your vulnerability because that will become your biggest strength. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think sometimes, actually most of the time we shy away from that. And when you're able to kind of like stand in your power and just own it, that's when you really kind of are able to push forward and um, for yourself and your business as well. That's such good advice. I really like that. Okay, share with all of our listeners today where they can find you online. Um, So our website is www.laundre, L-O-N-D-R-E, bodywear, B-O-D-Y-W-E-A-R, Dot com. And our Instagram is same spelling, Laundry Bodywear. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great name. It's I wanted so to add on that as well because obviously all of those other things are very important details, but branding is a huge part of it. Mm-hmm. And people connect need to connect to something and sometimes it's just the way it sounds or the way it like rolls mm-hmm. off your tongue. I think laundry is beautiful. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you. We, we were in London when we came up with that name. Yeah. yeah. We also had a few drinks. Yeah. We <laughs> you guys are creative when you have some <laughs> drinks. My kind of <laughs> two drinks in, you got to stop at yeah. two, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Two is the perfect two amount. amount. Yeah. <laughs> the idea is just go on the yeah. window. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Well, thank you so much for being here with us and for sharing with our listeners. Thank, thank you so much so for much. having us. Thanks. This is amazing. Bye. 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 You can follow us on social at Style for the Priv and at Priv Talks Podcast. You can find us wherever you listen to podcasts, subscribe, and don't forget to leave us a review. We're giving you 20% off when you shop our website with the code PRIVTALKS, all caps and no spaces. And lastly, pop over to our Facebook group for exclusive scoops, giveaways, events, and more. Trust me, you want to be there. See you next week. Bye.